So you just finished beating your very first Hoot Hoop that you found in the wild. You're pretty pumped about it, you got some XP, and it's about time to save your game. Well, time to go to bed now, so we're going to turn the game off and pick it up in the morning. Well, it's the morning now, it's time to pick up where I left off. And crap, where'd my save game go? Unfortunately, that's an issue that's all too familiar these days. You see a lot of these older games, like Game Boy games and Super Nintendo games, original Nintendo games, they had batteries in them that were actually responsible for storing the save files. They look kind of like that. Um, as opposed to newer games where they're stored on flash storage or on a hard drive, wasn't the case with these. So in order to maintain a save game on these, you need to have a charge battery. And over the course of 20, 15, even 10 years, those batteries, they just stop working. They don't charge up anymore, and they can't store your game. So I'm going to show you how to go about replacing your uh, save game battery and uh, get your game cartridge working properly again. So in order to do that, you need a couple of tools. First thing you need is a screwdriver. And with that screwdriver, you need a game bit bit. So this one is used to open up uh, Nintendo cartridges. It's a smaller of the two. They also make a larger one, which is used to open up the consoles itself. And these are fairly cheap. You can buy them on eBay for a couple of dollars each. And it really is a huge time saver because the screw themselves is a very specific screw. So you're not going to be able to get that out with any type of screwdriver. You need something specific like this. Now there are ways to get it out without uh, doing that, such as I've heard of methods that involve melting a pen and molding it around the metal, but this is just so much easier. Um, as well as that, you may need a little bit of solder. So this solder is 0.8 millimeters. It's a 60-40 lead tin or tin lead ratio, I think. And I mean, this is fairly cheap. I bought this, I don't know, maybe under $10 Canadian at uh, the source. And there's a ton of solder in here, so that's good to last me a long time. Lastly, you will need a soldering iron. So there are ways of replacing the battery without actually soldering, but I really don't like those as it involves taping the battery. And anyone who's ever used tape will tell you that tape isn't a great solution most of the time. It tape uh, loses its connection, it falls, it just gets sticky. I mean, why not do it properly? It doesn't take very long and it's really not that hard. First thing you want to do, open up the cartridge itself. So we use our screwdriver bit and just simply remove that screw. And it's just the one screw, so we'll put that aside. And in order to open the cartridge itself, all you do is you slide the top down and it will come right off and reveal the actual game inside. So this is a Game Boy game. The uh, game itself is pretty simple. I mean, there's not a whole lot to it. There's a couple of chips that control the actual game itself, the RAM, um, logic how it boots, and then there's your battery. So this is what we're gonna replace in this tutorial. So first thing you wanna do is heat up your soldering iron. And when you think it's good and hot, uh, the best way to test it is simply by taking a little bit of solder and it's called tinning the tip. You just touch it and if it melts right away, it's probably good. So you saw the solder melt and smoke right away. So we are good enough to start. So to desolder this battery is not difficult. All you really do is you touch the solder to loosen it up and lift the battery out of place. So I'm using these tweezers to get under the battery. I'm loosening up this solder and lifting it up just like that. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Um, you don't even really need tweezers, you can probably use your fingers. So heat up that solder pad and lift it right up. So that's how it is without the battery in place. So it is important to note the polarity. So if you look on the board itself, you'll see there's a little negative symbol right there and a positive symbol up at the top here. And it's very important that the new battery gets put on the same way. So pay close attention. The battery that you buy to replace it might not be exactly the same. Um, in this case, the positive is on the top, and in this one, the positive was on the bottom. So the positive terminal is actually 
this one, whereas the positive before was on the bottom there. So it's going to actually go in backwards from how it looked before. Um, so just make sure that that's lined up properly, and it's really quite simple to go ahead and reinstall it. So once again, installing it, not hard at all. You're going to want to heat up that solder again. Touch it so that it's nice and soft, and then I just slide the battery into place. Trying your best to get it flat on the board, just like that, and then just hold it for a moment so that it can sit in place. Now, if you notice, the solder isn't completely covering up the battery terminal here, so you can still see most of it. It's kind of protruding through the center hole, but there's clear definition where this is. So in theory, that could crack and I could lose it. So once I have this tacked into place, I'm going to go over top with more solder just to hold it better. But I'm going to get the other one going just so that this battery is ready to go. So heat up the solder. Push a little bit and release. Let it cool for about 10 seconds and we are set. So now let's zoom in again here and take a look. So this one is a little bit uh, more covered, but still it's pretty clear where the tabs are. You can see the hole in the tab, um, and that's not a bad thing. So what we're gonna do to fix that, zoom in a little bit here, I'm just gonna angle it so that you're not getting as much glare. So in order to fix that, all you're gonna do is just add more solder. So it's pretty simple. You grab your soldering iron, you grab your solder, you heat up the pad here, and you dump some solder into place. Just like that. So same thing for the other side. We're going to heat up this pad, hold it into place, and apply some solder. Now the nice thing about the solder is you can kind of move it around with the iron to get it where you like it, so that it's fully covered. You achieve maximum coverage and it doesn't have odd pointy parts. So that's pretty much perfect. So now, let's get you close here. So as you can see, the solder blob completely covers each tab. Um, you can't see the hole anymore. That battery's not going anywhere. I try and wiggle it and it's firmly into place. You notice the positive is on the top, and this arm's going down to the positive terminal. Same with the negative. Negative's attached to the negative where it needs to be. So while I have the game open, um, I'm going to use this as a great opportunity to clean those contacts. Because again, we're talking about a game that's probably about 15 years old, give or take a few. So over time, it's just gotten a little bit tarnished. It's going to get buildup of oxidization. Um, it's not necessarily rust, but it's just dirty and it's not going to read properly. So to do this, all you need is a Q-tip and a bottle of 99% isopropyl alcohol. So the process is really very simple. Dunk your Q-tip in the alcohol and you just start scrubbing. So unless it's really bad and you're having difficulty reading it, you usually don't need to use any more than this. You just want to scrub off any loose stuff that will come up just to make sure that when you insert it, it's going to read every time. There we go. So once you've given it a good scrub, use the dry end to buff it dry. This also helps to remove any residue that might have left behind anyways. Perfect. So now that we're uh, ready to go, let's put it back into the cartridge and screw it back together. So once again, all you need is that special security screw that you removed up before. Put it in the bottom and screw it into place. There you go. So we're going to test this out, make sure that it actually holds a save file now, but um, that should be usually all that you need. Um, it's a very simple fix and most people, as long as you have access to a soldering iron and a little bit of common sense, it's a repair most people should be able to do. So let's give this a try. Okay, so we're going to test to make sure that the game will actually hold a save now. So we're going to go into the game, save it, let it do, let it do its thing. 
Perfect, so we're saved. Now, turn this off and remove the game from the console itself. Um, the way that the storage works is it needs to have a current going through it in order to maintain its save file. So um, it's possible that current coming through the system could also do that. In order to make sure that that's not happening, I just remove it, make sure that the only thing possibly uh, servicing that chip is the battery that we just installed. So in a few seconds, we'll put it back in, start the console up, and see what we've got here. So press start, and there we go, continue. So we have that save game right where we left off. So that is how you replace a save battery in really any type of cartridge-based game. So whether it's a Game Boy game, a Super Nintendo, a Sega, um, some N64 games still use batteries. Some have moved on to newer types of storage, but uh, I mean, that's how you do it. It's pretty straightforward repair. Um, a lot of people can do it as long as you have a soldering iron. It's a fairly simple repair. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful. I hope that uh, you're able to revive that game that you loved playing many, many years ago. So if uh, this video was helpful for you, be sure to like it. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something you want to see me uh, do a tutorial on in the future, and I'll see what I can do to make that happen. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.